Craving the perfect holiday snack? Check out Farmer Bill's Biltonk. Think beef jerky, but better. No sugar, no preservatives, just pure animal protein goodness. Crafted from premium grass-fed beef or bison and air-dried to perfection, Farmer Bill's Biltong is nutrient-packed, energy-dense, and perfect for an on-the-go treat or a standout snack for your next party. My favorite is the original bison, but the other flavors like the original beef, smokehouse, and spicy chili have me second-guessing that choice more than once. Visit FarmerBillsProvisions.com to grab a one-pound slab or a variety pack and use code BIZBIT10 for 10% off. Farmer Bills Biltong, don't be the two-liter guy at this year's Christmas party. Welcome to the Business Bitcoinization Show, the show dedicated to helping you enrich your life and grow your business with Bitcoin, the hardest money on planet Earth. I'm your host, Josh Friedemann, and our guest today is Alex Wells, who's the co-founder and CEO of Imprint Digital. They're doing some great work for Bitcoin-specific companies as well as marketing for other businesses, and he's incorporating Bitcoin in the day-to-day of his business, which is something that I hope that you're thinking about doing as well. In addition to all that, he lives in Windsor, Colorado with his amazing and successful wife, Alyssa, a beautiful baby girl, August, and a son on the way any day. Of course, before we get to our interview with Alex, we do have this week's Bitcoin Meetup Spotlight. And this week, we have the San Antonio Bitcoin Club coming in for round two. They're having an event on September 8th from 7 to 9 p.m. They're going to meet at Geekdom, which is apparently the heart of the tech district in San Antonio. Their guests are going to be Lou Mormon and Joseph Kelly. And I I looked it up. Lou Mormon looks like he's doing some great work in the SaaS world as well as regenerative farming, which is an interesting combo. But it sounds like he's doing great work in both areas. And Joseph Kelly, as you may know, is the co-founder and CEO of Unchained Capital. They're going to be talking about micro and macro economics, Bitcoin, and the digital age we're living in. Once again, September 8th at Geekdom from 7 to 9 p.m. Now, if you're not in San Antonio, but you're interested in attending a Bitcoin meetup, I encourage you to scroll on down to the show notes. There will be a list of Bitcoin meetups across the United States. You can look by state and then by city to find the closest meetup to you. Now, we're going to get to our interview with Alex right after this. Business owners, unlock the benefits Bitcoin has to offer your business with the Bitcoin for Business Quick Start Guide. This 27-page guide highlights the six ways you can grow your business with Bitcoin. Check it out in the show notes. Alex, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. So I like to start off every single interview with a few questions that help us to get to know you a little bit better and give us some insight for our own lives. Are you ready for these? Yep. When and how did you first learn about Bitcoin? I first learned about Bitcoin. So um, I'll take you back to 2016. Uh, That was really when I started to sink my teeth into it. Uh, My co-founder, Bobby Shell, and me used to work together uh, at a previous company. And I remember him and I getting together at lunch. And the whole point of the lunch was really just kind of talking about life and financial responsibility um, and investments and and kind of how we both could really be better about that. And in that conversation, we started talking about Bitcoin. And it was from that moment on that both of us really made a lot of effort into trying to educate ourselves, networking, and and just having conversations about what was going on with this technology. What's an insight or fact about Bitcoin that you wish that everyone understood? The, The biggest thing that I wish everybody understood was just the fact that it is not an infinite thing. Um, and how important that is to, I think, just financial responsibility um, as a country uh, and as a world, really, as a world economy. What's the Bitcoin resource that you most recommend to other people? Hope.com. Um, that, I think, is a really good place uh, to start your journey. There's a lot of really good resources that you can read, and uh, there's books that are recommended for you to kind of start your journey. And I just think it's a, it's a good landing spot if you're curious about what's going on. So I've seen a couple of different people mention that or, or post about it. I've never checked it out. Is it essentially just a bunch of different resources that someone has gathered together that they would recommend for learning about Bitcoin? Exactly. Yeah, like it is just a, a huge library of resources. So um, I think obviously Bitcoin is is uh, one of those things where once you start it, you could go down quite the rabbit hole. 
Uh, but they've done a good job of compiling, I think, really credible resources to, to get that started for you. Beyond Bitcoin, what's a resource or an idea that's been helpful to you or your business recently? So for our business, not so much of a resource, uh, but uh, an opportunity. We, we had an opportunity to uh, be able to build up um, our resources as a business financially and start investing in Bitcoin very early on and also uh, be able to acquire some um, mining rigs. So uh, I think that in our quest to be able to get a business going, one of the biggest things that we wanted to make sure to do was uh, to incorporate Bitcoin into our business model. And so to be able to get that process started very early on, uh, I think is going to set us up for just a, a great opportunity to build off of that and then hopefully uh, be able to start to help more people, companies, small businesses, medium businesses, large businesses, anybody that we work with mm-hmm. uh, get educated on why we would make that decision and why everybody should start to, to think about doing it themselves. And now we have our final arbitrary but insightful question, and it's this. As a general life principle, is it better to ask why or why not? I think it is better to ask why right now. This has changed as uh, I've gotten older, uh, because I think that when I was younger, you know, why not was uh, something that I needed to ask quite a bit, because when you're really young, you just you're not 100 percent sure, at least I wasn't 100 percent sure. Uh, what your life was going to look like and what you were going to do. And so saying, why not? Why not do this? Why not go after this? I think was a a really big part of my professional journey when I was younger. Now, I think that uh, being able to be out in the in the job market and building up my skill set and uh, getting into a position where now starting my own businesses and making a lot of really big financial decisions, um, I start to ask myself why more uh, now. And, and I think that it would be common um, for a lot of people as you get older for that to shift. Meet Linkster, your premier Bitcoin-focused advisor. Linkster caters to businesses, institutions, family offices, and high net worth individuals. They merge your unique financial goals and needs with Linkster's Bitcoin expertise to craft your own sustainable plan to preserve and grow the value of your hard-earned profits and retained earnings. At Linkster, it's not just advice. It's tailored execution. Connect directly with the founder by visiting Linkster.com. That's L-Y-N-C-S-T-E-R. Dot com Linkster. Secure your future with Bitcoin. Today's episode of Business Bitcoinization is proudly brought to you by Vellus Commerce, where the future of business technology meets Bitcoin. As we journey through the era of Bitcoin and its transformational impact on businesses, there's one name that stands out. Vellus Commerce. Whether you're looking to build a cutting edge website, a seamless mobile app, or custom software, Vellus is your go to team. They've been diving deep into the world of Bitcoin since 2014, making them one of the most experienced groups for integrating Bitcoin and Lightning payments into a variety of digital platforms. But here's what truly sets them apart Vellus Commerce doesn't just build, they bring a wealth of knowledge to ensure your project success from day one. Their team understands the nuances of Bitcoin, ensuring that your business stays ahead of the curve. And for all business Bitcoinization listeners out there, Vellus Commerce is offering a free consultation to kickstart your project the right way. So if you're ready to future proof your business in the coming age of hyper Bitcoinization, head over to VellusCommerce.com or reach out on Twitter at Vellus Commerce. Let's make Make sure your business thrives in the Bitcoin era. Well, Alex, we're here today to talk about Imprint Digital, your leadership there, as well as how you're incorporating Bitcoin. I reached out, or I can't remember the conversation, how it developed, but I commented on something that Bobby Shell uh, wrote on Twitter, and then he connected us. He told me a couple things when he connected us. Uh, first of all, you're operating on a Bitcoin standard. You have the miners, which you've just mentioned. I'm, I'm interested to know how that falls into it all and that you're helping Bitcoin only companies. So just out of curiosity, before we delve into each one of those things, could you just tell us about uh, Imprint Digital? What is it that you do? Maybe how you've developed over the years as well, a broad overview of your company. Imprint Digital is really kind of built on a a philosophy that my partner, Bobby, and myself, um, we have been working in digital marketing now for pretty much 10 years each, you know, so we, we had a lot of experience. And 
I think that both of us, we uh, expressed a lot of interest in being a part of something that we felt was very disruptive and had a, a lot of opportunity, uh, a large runway uh, at the time, because when we both first started getting into it, I mean, you're talking uh, the iPhone coming out shortly there before that, um, you know, the the launch of uh, the social media mecca uh, that we see it as today. And so we just felt like there's a lot of possibilities with that. Um, and in that journey, we learned so much about how that became such an integrated part of business as a whole. Um, and because of that, I think that a lot of businesses just really weren't prepared for that. Like they, the, the reality is, is that like, if you take a chance and you go out and start a business, um, there's not a lot of people that take the whole, uh, digital marketing world, uh, into consideration. So to be able to help people, um, who are trying to, what? we feel like make this uh, world a great place to be in by starting a business and, and being able to, um, you know, go after that entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, we, we really felt like we could be an asset uh, to people in a way that was different by really taking into consideration our experience in working with business owners and the misunderstanding, the frustrations, the uh, difficulty behind trying to incorporate digital marketing into what they were doing um, and just have a friendly and really easygoing approach to that so that we could develop relationships and, and build those up and, and just have long-term clients that we could be an asset to. So, that's kind of the philosophy of it. We, we really uh, kind of took our experience and we, and we wanted to do it in our own way. And so we did that. And then on top of that, you know, there's the Bitcoin side of it, which what we've seen um, since we've really started investing our time and energy into Bitcoin is that with the technology has come businesses who are building this infrastructure of Bitcoin and the technology behind it and everything like that. And they're, they're innovative and they're creative. Uh, but what happens sometimes is when you're, you're trying to run a lean startup and you're, you're really trying to make a difference in the Bitcoin world, um, it can be hard to invest a lot of your resources early on into a digital marketing strategy, into hiring somebody, into, um, you know, putting a lot of the resources into that because a lot of Bitcoin is is built on technology. So if you're going to start a company, most of your resources are probably going to go to that first, right? Engineering, software development, those kinds of things. And that's smart. We would recommend that. But to get the message out, to educate people about your business, to, um, you know, really start interacting with the community and, and getting mass adoption into the forefront of people's minds, you need to take advantage of digital marketing tools. So we just kind of really felt like our experience, our background, who we are as people and, and kind of how we operate on top of our interest in Bitcoin and what we're seeing with companies coming out of the woodworks and starting all over the place that we we just had the right uh, mindset to uh, be in the right place in the right time and, and help these people. Mm -hmm. I'm curious. I don't know how long Imprint's been around, but has it has Bitcoin been a part of it from the beginning? Because I know up front you said that you and Bobby have been interested in it since 2016 or so. Was Imprint around at that point in time? And what's the adoption been like when it comes to Bitcoin in your business? Yeah. So uh, we actually just started um, our year anniversary um, is this Saturday, actually. So we uh, will have been in business for a year uh, this Saturday. And um, it was interesting. So starting the business as a whole really wasn't our plan um, for either of us, honestly. What our plan was is both Bobby and I, we we got very interested um, in seeing what kind of opportunities were out there with our experience in the Bitcoin world. So we started hitting the job market really um, last summer and, and looking for those opportunities. And uh, both of us saw a lot of companies that were hiring uh, for uh, people with our experience and our skill set. And um, really what our goal was is we wanted to start a capital investment company. And we did. 
Um, we we also are co-founders of Grit Investments, which is a capital investment company. And so what we wanted to be able to do is we saw that in the venture capital space, in the Bitcoin space, if we were able to um, acquire companies or invest in companies uh, that we could use our experience in, in the marketing world to give some um, energy to the things that we're investing in, right? To be able to uh, give it an engine, so to speak, right? To help it grow, to help it get uh, the message out, to educate people about these companies that we uh, wanted to be able to invest in. And in doing so, we saw so many people reaching out saying, hey, we need help. We need help. Is there anything you guys can do? And uh, so we said, absolutely, we would love to help. And we, we feel like we need to have a really good system to be able to do that. And so the company itself starting really was just built off of that. And, um, you know, once we started it and we, we started to get things going, we, we kind of took off and we saw so many people reaching out and we were able to, to grow enough to where is a business being able to shift and, and really focus on not only being able to offer a solution to help Bitcoin marketing um, and Bitcoin companies with their marketing, but also try to get ourselves into the Bitcoin standard to where it's like we're practicing what we preach as well. Uh, it, it just all kind of came together in, in such an awesome way. And, and we're so happy to be a year in uh, and to be able to keep building off of that. So I guess I didn't realize this, but it sounds like your entire customer base is somehow Bitcoin companies. Is that fair? Or do you have some that are other types of businesses? We do have some other types of businesses as well. You know, we we really, our main focus is uh, a few things when, when it comes to Bitcoins in, in Bitcoin specifically, and that's helping Bitcoin companies. If we can uh, somehow get involved in helping those organizations and use our skills uh, to help mass adoption, that's a win. Mm. The other thing, though, is what we saw is a lot of people we had relationships with, people in our network. Those were people that were reaching out immediately. And so to be able to help those people really kind of laid the foundation from a business standpoint financially we could start providing services charging for our services and, and helping those people now in doing that we can also help educate them um, about bitcoin and why we're wanting to uh you know get the message out help bitcoin companies and uh be on the bitcoin standard ourselves you just said bitcoin standard what does that mean to you what does it look like practically and maybe where would you like to be in the future the Bitcoin standard would really be uh, everything primarily, all or all finances, um, any sort of uh, currency, so to speak, all being Bitcoin, um, being able to take our transactions through Bitcoin, uh, being able to have any sort of capital that we have or, or build up all Bitcoin, you know, at least uh, as it pertains to what a lot of businesses would think of as like their cash reserves, we want it to be Bitcoin reserves, right? And, and just really incorporating it into everything that we're doing. Um, you know, there's a lot of moving pieces, right? Not everybody that you work with has that set up uh, necessarily. But if we can continue to uh, build our infrastructure in a way that allows uh, that to be possible, then if you fast forward into the future, what I'm hoping is that through our network, we can help increase adoption, really. Um, I think that that's the main thing for, for us is both Bobby and myself recognize that we really feel like there's a huge shift um, in the financial world. And I think a lot of us are seeing it, especially people that have, have really started to invest uh, into uh, Bitcoin themselves um, and the reasons why they've done that. Uh, and we really want to try to get ahead of that because the world itself is a beautiful place. And there's a lot of, I think, negative things going on as um, it's tied to the financial world. And we feel like Bitcoin fixes that. And so if we can help with that and help make people's lives better, both from providing digital marketing services, but also by educating people and getting the message out there so that 
each and every person that we talk to can hear more about it and we can help the world shift um, and uh, continue to be able to, to capitalize on the beautiful place that it is. I think that that's really the main goal. So I'm curious to know, what are some of the services or resources that are helpful? And speaking to business owners right now, maybe even business owners two or three years from now, you know, I've said pretty much from the beginning, at least in private conversation to other people, like this podcast, these types of conversations, we're still probably two, three years early from when a lot more people are going to be talking about them, but they're important to have now. So based on what you're seeing right now, and hopefully as insight for people in the future, what are some great services that have been helpful for you so far working on the Bitcoin standard? And what are some things that you're still kind of looking for or hoping to see in the future? Absolutely. So um, we start out, so I, I mentioned uh, hope.com. We start out really, if, if it's somebody that we're talking to that is very weary of it, you know, they're, they're the kind of person, maybe they're a little bit old school, maybe they don't believe in it. Maybe it's just so confusing that they just don't even know where to start providing a resource, providing a place that you can go to um, if you're, you're interested in knowing more, but you just don't know what to do, plant that seed, right? That's really the the first thing, you know, and then um, letting people know some of the things that we've used. Like, for example, uh, when we first started uh, investing in Bitcoin and, and trying to build up our, our cash reserves in Bitcoin, um, specifically, we started using Swan Bitcoin. Um, that was where we first started uh, investing in Bitcoin. And then as we've been able to get further and further down the road, we had a opportunity to, to get the mining rigs through a company called River Bitcoin. Um, you can invest in mining rigs through that company. And uh, they also allow you to be able to uh, build up uh, your um your Bitcoin portfolio inside of that, because as it's mining, uh, you have your your uh, deposits going into your account. Um, and so we decided to go ahead and put everything in one place to help for uh, for accounting purposes. Um, but I think that both uh, Bobby and myself, we just know a lot about uh, the different tools that you can use, um, where you can start. Uh, the pros and cons of some services compared to other services. How do you keep it safe? Uh, all of those things. And those are conversations we're having with everybody all the time. So the mining, I'm curious to know, is that something that you've taken on because you wanted an additional revenue stream? Is it philosophical, like you want to be a part of strengthening the network? Is it some combination of those? And how has it uh, practically been for you? Is it a benefit to the business right now? All of those things. I would say yes to all of those things. It, it, we do want to be a, a part of the network. We also want to be able to strengthen the the infrastructure. Um, you know, we believe there are a lot of benefits of that, right? And uh, from a business standpoint, um, we really liked what they had to offer and the fact that we could also uh, take what we already had and put it there too. Because again, when, when you talk about business, you always want to make sure that you're keeping a, a good hold of your accounting. Um, so being able to have a, a one-stop shop for everything as uh, we're mining and as uh, we're building that up, uh, that was, that was super beneficial. And um, for the business, it is a, a additional revenue stream. And it has already strengthened our portfolio as a business um, to be able to like the way I consider our business portfolio is we have our clients, um, we have our, our, our reserves of Bitcoin, and we have the Bitcoin that we're mining. And as we build up our portfolio of clients, as we build up our portfolio of Bitcoin, as we build up, um, you know, everything on the mining side, then we just become a stronger and stronger organization um, from our standpoint and kind of how we view the world. And we're excited to see how that continues to progress because, you know, we, we just want to keep that going. And if we were to fast forward three to five years from now, we really feel like we're going to build a, a very strong organization that is going to be able to be an asset to many, many people. So when it comes to the mining part, once again, just to follow up here, is this something that you found to be better for your business than taking profits from your current business and buying Bitcoin. Like, is it is it better or is it that it's KYC free? How have you thought through that? Yeah, I do think it is better. Um, it is KYC free. And outside of just the simple fact that, you know, we're, we're doing all of those things that we just talked about by um, 
you know, building up the network, adding to the infrastructure and all of those different things. It's a learning experience for us too. Um, you know, we are learning through this process more and more and in, in being a part of it and uh, taking it from like a personal uh, investment to a business investment. And we feel like by going through that process, that's going to allow us to educate other people um, about it too. Because I, I definitely think that in the future, this is probably going to be something that a lot of businesses would consider um, the more and more that they learn about it. Yeah. And I, that's why I'm asking the follow up because I don't know what the you know, different businesses and different, even locations, geographies will have cheaper or more expensive energy. And they have different business models, different business sectors. And so for some businesses, mm -hmm. it could be very profitable to have mining as a portion of their business. I'm just kind of interested to pick someone's brain who's actually doing it in their business, as well as sometimes people who are entrepreneurial just love learning new things, playing with new things. And that's a totally acceptable approach as well. So I appreciate you sharing some of those experiences. One, one other thing is, are there any things that you see in the space right now especially for owners of more Bitcoin specific companies, are there things that they should be thinking about that maybe other businesses don't have to think about as far as positioning, education, et cetera, et cetera? Yes, I do. Um, and I'm glad you asked this question because what I feel like a lot of businesses in the Bitcoin world really need to be thinking about is um, you, you uh, spend uh, time on Twitter, right? And that's become a, a very safe space, right, of trying to build up a community uh, in the industry. And uh, because of that, a lot of businesses who are in that space really need to make sure that they're they're focusing on that to build up a presence. But what I think is super important that all businesses in that space should think about is to be careful not to allow yourself to get into some of the toxic side of it, too. Um, I think that we see uh, people sometimes will take advantage of what has been popular um, in that space with the maximalist world. And some of what's been popular is is kind of the the frequent banter, so to speak, uh, that can happen in those spaces. And so what I think is very important to consider is that all of us, our main goal, Bitcoin companies, um, individuals in the space that are investing a lot of time and energy uh, into getting the word out, need to think about the fact that you want mass adoption, right? Mass adoption, I really feel like is, is the, uh, the main goal. And in order to do that, you really need to make sure that you're positioning yourself as a reputable source of information. And sometimes you get lost in kind of the, the goofy back and forth of some of that. Um, and it's gonna, it's gonna turn some people off and they might think that instead of this being a, a really legitimate solution to our financial issues, that you might just be crazy, <laughs> you know, like if you're not, if you're not careful about how you position yourself, um, you really should kind of think about the professional aspect of everything and how, you know, just like if you were to run into somebody, uh, um, you know, out and about, right. And you were to start to create a relationship, you don't immediately want to go into, um, you know, this kind of crazy world uh, that we see sometimes there. And you really want to be like, hey, have you heard about this? Like, here's some really good resources. This is why it's a good idea. And really position it from a, a very professional outlook, because I think that we're going to get more and more people um, interested in it the more we can position it that way. Yeah. And I love that there is an organization like Imprint Digital out there because you get to see a lot of, you know, a lot of different companies, what's working, what's not working. And you're going to have probably some of the, the best insight as far as companies doing marketing for the Bitcoin space. I know that you also have non-Bitcoin specific companies, but you're very Bitcoin friendly. I'm curious for those business owners who are Bitcoin interested, but not Bitcoin specific, do you have any recommendations for what they should be doing when it comes to digital marketing? Like digital marketing has been around. I, I would think of digital marketing as like Facebook, but obviously before that, you know, some Google and different things like that. But what would you recommend businesses be doing if they're not already uh, really ensconced in the space of digital marketing? We, we always recommend, and this is kind of part of our mission um, in our approach with the businesses that we work with, is we think that you should always be focusing on the long game. 
Um, if you were to go and, and educate yourself on uh, digital marketing, sometimes you might find similar to what I was just talking about in the Bitcoin space. You might find people that are like, hey, you know, you can go in and you can set these ad campaigns up and you're going to be able to make a ton of money and 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 all of this stuff. And I just really think that that is uh, really bad idea to think about things that way and instead what you need to do is you need to be focusing on your brand and you need to be focusing on making sure that you have a very good website and that you're doing things to add to the profitability of your business and so the biggest things that you can do for that is focusing on search engine optimization of your website which is the process of basically educating google of what you do so that when people are trying to find you, you can come up in the non-paid section of search. Mm -hmm. That's where the growth is. Because if you can get traffic to your website and you can get leads and sales um, and grow that way, well, by not having to pay for each and every single click and each and every single time that somebody sees you, there's so much profitability that can be made there to help your business grow. So that's a really big part of what we want to make sure people are focusing on. And then on the branding side, really taking advantage of some of the tools that are available right now. And so a lot of exposure right now can be found in Instagram reels and on TikTok. And as a matter of fact, I think it was just a little bit earlier this year, uh, we uh, found out that Pepsi is pulling out of the Super Bowl halftime show. And what they're doing is they're investing more into digital and really focusing in on that. And so what I think is important is you got to focus on uh, making sure that you're following the people that have historically done well. And so for somebody like that to pull their investment out of something so large and start to put it into a digital focus should definitely signal that there's a lot of opportunity there. And the other thing with Instagram Reels and TikTok specifically is with Facebook, what we saw for a very long time is if you were a business and you went and, and set up your Facebook page and you were consistent, you would get so many impressions and you'd be shown so much to people. What happened was they monetized it so much to where now if you're a business and you go out and start your Facebook page in order to actually start to grow it and get exposure, you really almost have to throw ad dollars behind mm -hmm. it. Well, you're seeing a lot of opportunity to get so much views and so much exposure through these other avenues with Instagram Reels and TikTok especially uh, because they're in an earlier stage of what they're doing. But what's gonna happen is as more and more people flock to those and more opportunity for them to make money starts to happen, you're gonna see something similar most likely and, and they're gonna start to make it so that you have to pay to play. So businesses as a whole really need to be focusing on the long game and building up that brand presence and taking advantage of some of these tools that are giving you a tremendous amount of exposure simply for your time and energy as an investment instead of your money. So last question here, this might be uh, too far in the future as far as the, the reality of it, but in a more decentralized and self-sovereign world, which we're hopefully building toward, how does that begin to change people's strategy when it comes to digital marketing? Once again, if it's too far out in the future to really answer that well, that's okay. But just any thoughts that you might have there? That's a great question because we're actually already starting to see it uh, quite a bit. So... Everybody has heard about the stuff that happened with like the 2016 election and all of the things that, you know, really started to happen on social media and some of the privacy concerns that came up. Well, what we're seeing is ever since then, it's been a constant battle and you're seeing more and more cracking down as far as like, what are you actually tracking um, for people what, and and how much do they know about it? And so uh, in the very near future, I can't remember the date off the top of my head, but we're going to see um, cookie tracking completely dismantled. Mm -hmm. So your typical ways of tracking behavior through like Google Analytics and stuff like that, it's going to change a lot. Um, and so in this decentralized world, the way that you grow your audience is going to look very different than it used to. 
to where um, you're going to have to be much more strategic about how you're getting consent from people and how you're getting information um, from people to uh, grow your audience and, and figure out who your target uh, audience is and how to grow your business when it comes to getting in front of those people. And we'll leave it there for now. And if people want to find out more, they can reach out to you. Maybe Alex, before we finish up, if you could share where they can find you as well as any final thoughts you have before we finish up today's interview. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you can find me personally uh, on Twitter. Uh, I'm under a uh, handle at Wells Marketer. You can find me on Instagram under a Wellsish, um, and I'm on LinkedIn. I try to do at least a post every day um, under Alex Wells, the CEO of Imprint Digital. And uh, please, you know, check out Imprint Digital. We have profiles on all these platforms too. Um, it's either under Imprint Digi imprint digital or imprint marketing. Um, one of those handles typically is where you can find us and always imprint-digital.com. Um, check out our website, fill out a form. We're always happy to help. Anything we can do for you, we'll take some time, talk to you and, and just see what the best uh, solution to help your business is. All right, Alex, thanks so much for your time today. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Well, friends, it's a wrap. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Business Bitcoinization Show. If you want to reach out to either me or Alex, you can find our links down in the show notes. And if you know of a business owner who could benefit from hearing about what's happening in this space, how businesses are adopting Bitcoin, please do share this episode with them. As always, keep building, keep growing, and until next time, keep living and leading well. If you're a regular listener of the podcast, thank you. If you want to take a further step in your support for the show, you can help us grow by listening on Fountain, a value for value podcast app on iOS or Android. If you hear something you like that you disagree with or anything else, you can share it by sending some sats and adding a comment with your thoughts. Some of you have already done this and I appreciate it. I'm going to begin reading your boosts on upcoming episodes. So if you have some insight or value to add, let the people know. Getting started with Fountain is easy. You can add Bitcoin to your Fountain wallet by using your fiat accounts or any lightning wallet and one of my favorite features is that once you're using the app you can earn sats just by listening on fountain check out the link in the show notes to get started with fountain today